Welcome to the beautiful Gateway Arch, also known as the Gateway to the West. The arch is one of the main features of the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, together with the old courthouse and the Museum of Westward Expansion. The memorial was founded in 1935 in honor of the third president, Thomas Jefferson, and the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase was a deal Jefferson made between the United States and France, where France sold much of today's central United States to the newly formed country, which effectively more than doubled the size of the United States. While the memorial area has been around since 1935, the planning of the arch didn't begin until after the Second World War. In 1947, a nationwide architectural competition for the design of a new monument was held, which was won by a Finnish-American architect, Eero Saarinen. His winning entry was what you can see today in front of you, the massive gateway arch. The construction of the arch itself began in late 1963, and it stood finished in 1965 and was open to the public two years later. During construction, both two legs were built up simultaneously. The base of each leg at ground level had an engineering tolerance of 1 64th of an inch, so there was a need for great engineering precision to make it work. The construction team also faced another problem when the time came to connect both legs together at the top. The sunlight hitting the south leg caused the metal to expand slightly, which prevented it from aligning precisely with the north leg. In order to solve this problem, the St. Louis Fire Department was called in and sprayed the south leg with water, cooling it off and the two legs could be united. The arch is made of a stainless steel skin covering two carbon steel walls and it stands an impressive 192 meters tall and 192 meters wide. While the outside of the arch is certainly impressive, one shouldn't forget the inside. The interior of the arch is hollow and contains a highly unique transportation system, which leads to an observation deck at the top. If you look carefully at the top of the arch, you can see the observation deck's small windows. The transportation system functions as a combination between an elevator and a tram, with a 40-passenger train made up of eight five-passenger capsules in each leg. All capsules rotate 155 degrees during the trip to the top of the arch. When the capsule starts out from the lower zone, the tracks are overhead, but as it goes up the arch, the tracks go beneath the capsule. There is also a conventional elevator reaching halfway up and a 1076 step staircase for emergency use only. A trip to the top and back takes around 10 minutes and I can highly recommend it, unless you're claustrophobic or very scared of heights of course. The view from the top is great. On a clear day one can see up to 48 kilometers from the city of St. Louis to the west across the Mississippi River and southern Illinois with its Native American culture mounds to the east. The entrance to the arch is from the underground visitor center located directly underneath it. From the visitor center you can move to either base of the arch and enter the tramway through its narrow double doors. Under the arch you will also find the Museum of Westwood Expansion the museum documents man's irrepressible urge to explore and the expansion of the United States. Make sure you don't miss this wonderful museum. Throughout the years, the arch has been the place of several notable stunts and events. More than 10 light aircraft have successfully flown under the arch, and people have been trying to scale and land with a parachute on top of it, more or less successfully. Today, the Gateway Arch has become the iconic image of St. Louis and a gateway between the western and eastern United States. It is also one of the very tallest monuments in the whole U.S. with its mighty 192 meters. Majestic in its concept, 
magnificent with its surroundings and unique in its execution. The Gateway Arch is something for the history books.